Excuse us. No, pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Just move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. Okay, so, we got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. This shit better be good. Let's hope so. Shh. The movie's starting. I'm Mally Moore. I'm Dustin Goes to Hollywood. And this is the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tells crime to shut up! Yes, it is. Because this week on the show, we're, of course, as you can tell by the title, talking about 2010's Super. You said that with <laughs> such enthusiasm. Mm-hmm. Because I'm excited. This is going to be a super episode. It's our 99th. Uh, please. Mm-hmm. How how many super puns Lots are you going to make? Lots of super puns. God <laughs> Damn it. Uh, thank you for tuning in, everyone. If this is your first time uh, tuning in, you picked a hell of an episode because we're talking, as I mentioned, about James Gunn's 2010 superhero black comedy, Super. Um, this is like the second James Gunn affiliated movie we've done in pretty recently. What was did, oh Brightburn? Yeah, that's we right. did Brightburn recently. Brightburn. Um, Which this apparently movie, these movies take place in the same universe. If mm-hmm. you go by the post credits of Brightburn, mm-hmm. this movie much better, much better, um, so much better than Brightburn. <laughs> uh, but what we like to do on this show is watch movies uh, like Brightburn and Super, and uh, you know movies that don't typically end in your uh, neat little bow, your Hollywood happily ever after. And uh, we like to find a silver lining for those characters at the end of things, or for the audience. If uh, you're not feeling too great at the end of this movie, we try and pick you back up. Um, but we're not good at it, apparently. Yeah, not 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 great by any no. means. But we do have a guest Lord. joining us on this episode. Long time coming. Uh, Kobe Evans, thank you for joining us, Kobe. I, Kobe fucking dipped out. Hey, guys, what's up? Oh, there, oh, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Super's rad. I forgot how much I liked this movie. Super is... This is my second time seeing it i've only seen it one other time before and i've seen it a yeah, couple times here. it's like it's this is like proto the boys umbrella academy like all that shit that like kind of realistic take on superheroes mm-hmm. um it's also a very very james gunn movie yeah May, maybe james gunn at his best i'm not gonna lie it's, i really like this movie it is very james I, gunny I used to. I remember, like, when he was announced for Guardians of the Galaxy. Like a lot of a lot of people were like, "Who the fuck is James Gunn?" Mm-hmm. I would recommend them this movie. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I mean like, what else am I going to recommend? Like Slither or the Scooby Doo movies? Yeah. No, no, his trajectory makes sense. Yeah. It's super. <laughs> and then you. Yeah. Look let's at let's Guardians. not forget he wrote the Scooby Doo movies. Yeah, he did. He wrote. They they much got darker. Heavily, <laughs> they got heavily rewritten after his drafts. Yeah, so much darker so. Scooby Doo movies. Uh, um, Kobe, though, why don't you tell me about your experience with Super? What was the first time uh, you saw it? What was it like? Uh, you know, wh- how did it hold up on this rewatch? All that good stuff. Oh man, like I had to go back into like uh, my movie listing app to see when I watched it. I watched it like for the first time at the end of 2019. Oh, so this is pretty for the recent. First time. For you. Like I'd watched Guardians and you know a ton of other James Gunn stuff, and mm-hmm. then I watched Slither, I think in the middle of last year, and then um, eventually watched Super, and oh my god, <laughs> if you would have told me the same person did Guardians of the Galaxy, like two or three years after this, mm-hmm. whoa, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. I still haven't seen <laughs> Slither. Is it worth a watch? It's. It's fun, like it's very campy, but like it's a great B, like a B horror movie for sure. Okay, I enjoy it. Well, what about you, Mally? How, how do you hold up on this rewatch? Is it better than you remember? Oh yeah, I mean, I don't know if better, but I mean, just as good. Like I love this movie from the get go. I saw this shit in theaters, son. Mm, okay, because um, I remember the trailer for this dropped. Because mm-hmm. all right, let's be. I want to be upfront about it. This movie got heavily overshadowed by kick-ass which is yeah. very fortunate yeah because like they were in production around the same time blah 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 and like kick-ass is great yeah but i like this movie more honestly like the first kick-ass is rad like nick cage absolutely kills it but as a story i like i relate to the characters in this movie more than like any of the characters in kick-ass like kick-ass is a good time but i think this is a better story if that makes sense 
Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like this <sighs> this I feel I feel more emotionally connected to this movie than I do kick ass. This one leans more into the camp anyway. Like it's very I don't know, I don't want to say character driven, but kick ass is more about the atmosphere whereas this movie is more about yeah, having fun with the idea. Yeah. Well, and I think like one of the big things for me is how fucking good Rain Wilson is in this. Yeah. Like this this was like, I mean, this was what 2000 came out in 2010, so mm-hmm. it was probably shot in 09 maybe, mm-hmm. probably. Um, so I mean, this was like peak The Office. Mhm. But like I don't like I I don't see Dwight Schrute when I watch this movie. Well, I he's got elements of Dwight. I mean, but I mean that's just Rain Wilson's thing. Like that's what he's good at. Yeah, like I mean, he brought a lot of himself into that character on The Office, but yeah, I don't know, dude. He's just he's so good in this. Like, cause Rain Wilson, he's done a bunch of smaller, like, kind of indie flicks like this. I think they get overshadowed. Like, fucking, you remember Hesher? Mm-hmm. That movie with him and Justin Gordon Levitt. That movie's fucking great. I was gonna say, fun fact. Uh, I'm currently watching The Office for the first time. Oh, where are you oh, at right so now? I'm getting yeah. a ton of Rain Wilson. What's what season are you uh, on, I'm bro? A, I, I think I'm about to hit season seven. Okay. okay. So okay. Pam and Jim just had the baby, and uh, I think um, uh, Dwight's trying to get uh, Angela pregnant. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, okay. like that. Nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So if you're about to start seven, you're getting you're getting to the end of the what I'm going to call the golden years. Yeah. Is That's it, what I've heard. Yeah. It it, it definitely drops off uh, after seven for sure. Yeah, um, there there's still some good stuff in yeah, the those... last in the last two seasons, but there it definitely a drop in quality. Yeah, the last two seasons get a lot of ship. I mean, they're they're enjoyable, but I mean, yeah, they don't stand up to the to the first seven seasons. Um, well, that's interesting though. Like, I can't believe I've found someone who hasn't fully seen The Office multiple times. <laughs> that's I a do, unicorn. I've... I've ran into a few people like I think it's mainly since uh, the pandemic started that are have just been like, you know what? I'm finally going to watch The Office. Oh, yeah. Like, I think like this, Kobe, may, you might be like the third or fourth person I've met in the past few months that's finally watching The Office for the first time. Yeah, I'm really bad at uh, not seeing popular shit until it's a decade later which so is interesting because last year for the first time you're, you're such a, a fucking huge, rebel <laughs> which is interesting because kobe's <laughs> a huge cinephile like you had a, a dvd a blu-ray collection that was like jaw-dropping i remember oh. last time oh. dustin i mean you're kind of in the same boat you didn't yeah. see blade runner until like two years ago yeah i saw it right before 2049 came out I mean, there's a lot of classics that I haven't seen what? that I'm just now getting around to. Yeah, see, even even he's complete. Blade Runner seems like your style, man. It, you know what? It, it does seem like it would be my style, but I did not like that first one. I think maybe it just it's too far gone now. And there were elements of it I liked a lot, but in 2049, I fucking loved. But I don't know. I think I had just so much riding on that movie that when I finally saw it, it just didn't connect with me. Wait, um, did you, did you see it before or after 2049? I saw it double feature. I saw the the original and then I saw uh 2049. I saw it without the VO as well. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. So that's I, I kind of like double feature him. Uh anyway, back to Super. So oh, uh, yeah. why don't we talk about uh what makes Super so great? Uh, uh it's Kevin Bacon. <laughs> I'm getting there. <laughs> it's Kevin Bacon, guys. The year is uh, 2010. Director is James Gunn, as we mentioned. The movie stars Ellen Page, <laughs> Rain Wilson, Liv Tyler, Greg Henry, Kevin Bacon, Nathan Fillion, William Catt, Michael Rooker, and a surprising cameo that I, I don't even know where he's at in the movie. Rob Zombie. He's the voice of God. Oh, uh, okay. Because I, yep. I was looking... I remember when I was filling out my notes for this, I always look up the casting. Oh, and yeah. It's a voice cameo. That's insane. Okay. Because <laughs> the whole movie, I'm like, who is Rob? Who could he possibly be? Well, in this and movie? then you got, uh, what's her name? Linda. Is it Carlini? Linda Carlini. As like the. The pet uh, store girl. The pet store girl. Mm-hmm. It's like, pet what? Store. That's. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I lots like of people Good. in this movie that I just completely forgot about. Yeah. I mean, hell, James Gunn himself plays the demon. Yeah. 
Which is <laughs> so good. <laughs> Everything involving the Holy Avenger is amazing. Yeah. I would definitely watch uh, Adult Swim produced Holy Avenger show. Um, all right. So, I mean, we got to talk about Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon. Solid as hell in this movie, in yeah. my opinion. That Giving dude is a great so charismatic. Who doesn't love Kevin Bacon? Mm-hmm. I mean, come on. And I lo- like it really didn't click for me until this rewatch. I was like, man, that Kevin Bacon joke in Guardians 1 really mm-hmm. hits home even more now. Because I forgot. I was like, oh, he had just done a movie with Kevin Bacon before that. Like, that's hilarious. When did that first Guardians um, come out? Wasn't it like 2014? 2014. Okay. So four years later. <laughs> okay. Um, duh, I'm sure you came across this. You know who was originally supposed to play that role, though, in this movie. No, why don't you tell me? John claude oh, Van yeah, Damme. Mm, I could see it. Like, he got, they replaced him like a week before they started shooting because he just like disappeared or some shit. Yeah, that makes Which sense. Kinda, <laughs> I think that explains why this character's name is like Jacques. Yeah. Like that 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 fits John Claude Van Damme a little bit, but I'm so glad we got Kevin Bacon because he's he's great. I, I don't know. It it would have been a completely different character with John Claude mm-hmm. Van Damme. Like mm-hmm. wouldn't have been nearly as charismatic. Like that first scene with him when he's yelling at him about touching the car. Yeah, it's great. Like, I, I I can't picture John Claude Van Damme <laughs> delivering that. He's got he's got good comedic timing too, and yeah. Well, I mean, the, the first scene's the the egg scene, man. Yeah, the egg scene. We'll get in. We'll get into all the great scenes with Kevin Bacon. Uh, but first, the, bu- the oh, budget. Oh, the uh, fuck! You're right. The budget was uh, two and a half million. Very modest budget, uh, but it only managed to gross four hundred and twenty three thousand dollars worldwide, and uh, currently sits at a forty nine percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Wrong. Yeah, it's pretty low. Like I would. I mean, I wouldn't put it up in like the eighties or nineties, but it's at least in the seventies, right? I'd, yeah, I, 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 I give it a seventy-one. Yeah, I would too. I give it a seventy-one. Uh, well, why don't we? Uh, if people are on, you know, not very familiar with the movie Super, why don't we watch the trailer and so people can get an idea of exactly what we're talking about? Fine. I knew I was losing her. Excuse me, have you seen my wife? I don't think she wants to see you anymore. Sarah! Don't touch my car again. I'm going, that's not the kind of touching I'm at. <laughs> Jock, you stole my wife. I love the way he spells Jock. Sometimes it's better just to accept these things. <laughs> Batman, battering, pipe bombs, utility belt. Utility uh, belt. Green arrow has a bow and arrow. Okay. Why do you need all those? I'm making up my own superhero. He needs a weapon. That'll do. Cool. All it takes to be a superhero is the choice to fight evil. Shut up, crime. Don't steal. Don't deal drugs. Don't molest kids. Brutal assault by the Crimson Bolt continued last night. Are you him? No. That's cool. I could be your kid's sidekick. Ta-da! How do I look? That's inappropriate. Frank is the only thing that will save me. We will take those suckers down. It's good. Let's do this. You just sit here and wait for crime to happen? <laughs> That's right. <sighs> this is so boring. Yes, I can tell you now it's the kid. You're supposed to kill him! I'm just learning! You have to teach me these things! This is not about good and evil. This is about she loving me more because I am interesting! (laughs) Yeah! Crimson Bolt! I just remember when that trailer came out, everyone's like, oh, this movie's ripping off Kick-Ass. I'm like, ah, is it? Like, I don't think so. It's different than Kick-Ass for sure. Um, Very different movie. I am. I think I've said this before on the show when we've done somewhat older movies. Uh, I am so glad we got rid of the whoosh sound effect in in transitions and trailers because it's not needed and it's so awful. <laughs> 
I hope it comes back just to fucking spite you. <laughs> that and the the unnecessary VO in trailers too. Awful. Oh, uh, fuck that, dude. I miss like trailer guy voice so much. The in a world guy. In a world. Yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah. That'd be rad. Okay. Uh, where do we want to start with Super? Because it's there's a lot of ground to cover. I'm gonna start with okay. what I can only assume is your favorite scene in the movie. Oh boy, this this can go many different ways, and it's I don't. It's the I don't quick like it. clip of the weird, fucked up tentacle anime porn that pops <laughs> up on the TV at one point. <laughs> oh, the hit That is your favorite part. I know it to be true. I love that it's played like he's just flipping through the channels, and he just happened to come across that. As if there's any channel that would just broadcast hentai like that. <laughs> that's clearly that you don't deny it. That's clearly like a, a DVD he shoved at the player. <laughs> no. DVD, man, that was definitely a VHS. VH, yeah, yeah, that's a VHS thing. Um, you know, it's funny that I, I had, like I said, I'd only seen this movie once before. And I had remembered so little about it. I only remembered the scene, the other tentacle scene where he gets his head cut open. I remembered... Ellen Page, spoiler alert, dying pretty late into the movie, horrifically, and that was pretty much it. And, of course, his catchphrase, which is probably one of my most quoted movie quotes of all time, shut up, crime. It's it's brilliant. (laughs) It's short, sweet, to the point. It's eloquent, almost. Mm -hmm. Um, Dude, that, like, divine vision sequence, like, if you've never seen Slither, just imagine that, but for, like, an hour and a half. Oh, God. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking, too. (laughs) That's... Oh, I will say, shockingly decent effects for such a low budget movie in that scene, though. The, yeah, the 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 visual effects are not too bad for uh, such a small budget. But I will say, man, uh, it's a shame because the rest of this movie kind of looks like shit. Like the the color is not great, the lighting's not great either. But I mean, like he's making up for it with like these great performances. But unlike where like. For example, Clerks, where it's, you know, the low budget is part of its charm. I don't know, man. Like, the the parts I like the most are, like, the montages where they're doing, like, the animated titles and, like, the uh, the colorful backgrounds and stuff. Like, the opening credit sequence is great. Yeah, like, that's, that is really good. That's what I was hoping there would be a lot more of in this movie. And it's only really in, like, that one little montage that I can think well, of. And it's weird how, like, at least in regards to, like, the camera work and the cinematography... Like, some of the shots, you know, just look like normal, like, you know, like, overs and stuff like that. But then you have, like, these really, what I can only describe as, like, indie film rookie shots. Mm -hmm. Like, when, um, right before the don't touch my fucking car scene, the first, like, the intro into that scene is, like, Frank running up to Jock. Mm -hmm. And, like, the camera is super handheld and, like like shaky and like the framing has them like cut off at the knee yeah and like it's really kind of amateur but then like it cuts to like an over from like over jock's shoulder onto frank and it you know it it looks like a movie yeah it's really weird there's how, there's like, a lot of between that between these normal shots and like these amateur yeah there's a lot of that in this movie like um the, the one that sticks out in my mind is when he's like kind of uh staking out the the club or whatever and there's the scene where michael rooker is like escorting a clearly inebriated Liv tyler out he parks his car directly in front of the club like straight on is just sitting in the driver's seat watching like if michael rooker just takes even a glanciary look to his right he's right there <laughs> like he's not hiding well at all to be doing this stakeout well and i think that plays into the fact that he does that character doesn't know what the fuck he's doing like i mean he's he's in this he makes this costume but then drives around in his own car yep and like they cover the license plate yeah like they kind of put an emphasis on the fact that you can see his license plate constantly Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, i mean the fucking uh jumping ahead here but like the uh when he's waiting in line at the movies is a great example Dude, that's my he favorite jumps, scene of the movie. That's oh, such man. a good scene. He jumps out of line, walks across. I support him. Yeah, his, you don't oh, cut in 100%. line. His car is parked directly across the street. He gets in his car, changes, walks back, and he, even like the guy 
says he's like dude i just saw you walk out of line (laughs) yeah that's the best part is that he calls him out on it i that's the that's that's another one of the scenes that i remembered from this movie and that's that's probably my favorite one just because it's so ridiculous and hilarious (laughs) see one of my one of my favorite things is like like we're kind of jump we kind of jumped over the setups like all right his wife leaves him to be with his drug dealer Mm -hmm. because she's a drug addict and he decides to take up superheroism to get her back Mm -hmm. anyway that leads into the greatest montage of all time of him fighting crime like him tackling the first snatcher directly into the woman in the wheelchair Mm -hmm. is so fucking funny (laughs) yeah like i I love the drug dealer that he's straight up murdering people like the the lady in the lady in the alley who gets a cinder block oh god he's fucking (laughs) dead and I love the, the zoom into his face as he's like maniacally laughing too. That's great. Yeah. But uh, the drug dealer, where he's like counting his money, he looks up and Frank just bashes him in the fucking skull. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty great. Dude, the, the head trauma in this movie. Oh, God. Is, there's so crazy. many. So many people are brain dead or just flat out just well, deceased. Dude, like the guy that cuts in line at the movies, like that shot of the aftermath. Oh, his head splitting open. Like, where his head's just like <laughs> caved in and split open. It's just like, Oh my God. Oh yeah. No, I mean the, the, the deaths in this movie are fu- I mean, we can jump a little ahead, but like even Ellen Page's death is shocking how violent it is. Yeah. Like for this movie. For I did so- not expect that at all. No, no, no neither did I. <laughs> like even on my first the first time i ever saw this movie like i knew like it's gonna be a dark comedy it's gonna be kind of fucked up never expected you know fucking ellen page to get her fucking head blown off no. never saw that coming and like, even for you I've to see this, it i've seen this movie a couple i'd say probably five or six times and every time i'm like ah oh, fuck that's right i forgot that happens yeah it's like it's it's shocking this is definitely a movie that uh you won't get that shock value after you watch it the first time. I don't know, man. On this rewatch, I knew it was coming. And I think just the shot of him rolling her over and half her face is gone. Yeah, that's what gets me. Like, I know she gets shot in the head, but yeah. I, like the when he exactly like you said, when he rolls her over and half her fucking head's gone, it's just like, ah, fuck. I mean, Ellen Page's character is an interesting one because she's this comic book aficionado. Like, that's how her and Rain Wilson's character meet. But then when she becomes his sidekick, it's like she's never seen a, a comic book like she's piece of media. She's an absolute psychopath. She's insane. And like she's const- fucking nuts. Constantly calling him by his name while they're in costume and is like just screaming every four seconds. Like it's it's weird that like she doesn't know how to be a sidekick. And I mean, we'll get well, to it when we talk about and- it, but like just how she plays up the uh the sexual tension between the two is yeah it's like from from the moment she decides to showcase her crime fighting abilities to frank Mm -hmm. every scene between them afterwards is so odd and uncomfortable yeah no i mean like i mean we can we can go ahead and talk about it like the basically the rape scene between yeah, like, the two of them the, like the rape scene it's it's there it's oh, weird that's we gotta, my, we that's gotta, my we gotta discuss it that's your favorite scene what <laughs> Kobe. just just the uh no just the line where she's like it's all gushy oh, uh. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. i mean that word has new connotation now that uh cardi b's wop has been out but like man uh. it's it's Man. weird, like I, Kobe. I I'd, I'd love to get your thoughts on the film Hard Candy. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, I have yet to see that. Oh, but someone brought it up to me yesterday, so it's been it's on my list. I'm actually kind of glad you brought it up, Mally, because it's interesting. Oh, like that we've now done two movies featuring Ellen Page that have wildly subversive takes on like sexuality for that character. Like this is a it's weird because it's somewhat in the same vein as what she's doing in Hard Candy, but in a way more juvenile, childish kind of way. Like, and for less uh, cruel intentions, I'll say. But like, man, it's it's a very uncomfortable scene to watch. Like, I I feel for Rain Wilson in that moment, and it's like, what what has gotten into into Libby, man? Like, he tell like she tries that once before. And he's like, no, I'm married. That That's a sacred bond. 
And she's just super fucking horny for Rain Wilson in this movie. Yeah. All the sex scenes are so uncomfortable in this movie. All of them. Every yeah. sex scene. Like even Liv Tyler, it it's getting sexually assaulted in the climax of this movie. It's 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 rough, man. Especially like, you know, we all know James Gunn now. Like he's in the the common household name. We know his past. And this movie is the most James Gunny of his movies, like in terms of that what he was like in the twenty tens, like if anybody who knew him and knew his social persona, like this was him. He was really into like this juvenile subverting well, like the That's norm. what makes the whole like tweet bullshit with him that happened so fucking stupid. It's like guy like y- y'all y'all hired the guy that made Slither and Super, like what get, Yeah. And I mean y'all it, didn't like Get the fuck over it. We talked about this with Brightburn, too. Like, he's a tone for that stuff. I, I do feel like he's grown much more, not just as, like, a filmmaker, but as a person. I mean, I don't know him personally. I You know, I, I briefly met him, but I didn't really get to speak with him. But it's, I don't know. It's, when you watch this movie, and then you jump to, like, you know, Guardians 2 or something, you can definitely see how much more he's matured in still keeping a similar tone to his movies, like a similar style of comedy. Like, he's perfected that, I think. Uh, and yeah, it's just a shame that like he his name got dragged to the mud like that. Given that you know cancel culture is such a, a high priority on people's list nowadays, that sometimes you know we can we can go a little too far. Disney definitely did the wrong thing, I think, in that situation. But I'm glad he's back. I'm glad he's got two movies coming up soon. You know, yeah. Suicide Squad and then uh, Guardians Three. I'm looking forward um, to it. On oh, man, the I... go ahead. I was gonna say I don't I don't know how he managed to still be able to like do a DC movie and a Marvel movie. That that's especially he, with, he draws um, in the the big bucks, man. He I knows mean they the, have I, there's how many I think he might be the first one that's directed one for each, but I mean look at how many actors have crossed over between those franchises. Oh yeah. And I love too that Disney's like, yeah, go ahead and finish your Suicide Squad uh, Suicide Squad movie, then come over to us. Like the fact that they were able to rectify that situation is great. So on the topic of Guardians, I do want to talk about Tyler Bates' music for this because he scored the Guardians films as well. Mm -hmm. And we don't get a ton of score in this, but I think the stuff we do get is actually pretty great. Like the music um, when he's escaping after his first attempt to rescue Sarah when he gets shot in the leg Mm -hmm. before he goes to Libby's. Mm -hmm. I think that little bit of score there is fucking rad. I don't, it must like, not have had an impact on me because I don't really recall it. Uh, I mean, it's it's not terribly memorable, but I was trying. I was actually I was actively trying to focus on the score on this rewatch mm-hmm. because this was the first time I'd really watched it aware that it was the same guy that scored Guardians. And there's like you can, like the dude, he definitely has a certain style because especially in that escape scene, I was like, there's like. I see how this guy was able to go score a movie like Guardians because he's got that like almost like little like epicness to mm-hmm. his music that it doesn't obviously doesn't quite fit in this movie, but you can just like underneath the surface, it's like, man, this guy's dying to score like a big fantasy movie, like 100%. Maybe I need to rewatch Super then because I like I said, the score didn't really have much of an impact on me. But I mean the soundtrack as well. Like I didn't really care too much for some of the music choices. Uh, I mean they fit within the context of their scenes. They're just not yeah. Like this pieces. this this movie's mainly made up of needle drops. Mm-hmm. Which Lots of needle drops. It's fine, I guess. Like you can get away with it in movies like this. Like I don't. I think they maybe did a li- couple too many, but mm-hmm. you know whatever. Um, also the score when he, when the detective realizes who Crimson Bolt is and goes to Frank's house. Yeah. The music there is actually really good too. Yeah. I, I, I like that detective character. I th- when he's first coming over to Frank's house to give him to sign that paper, the, just how bad Frank is at having a secret identity of like <laughs> the closet. Oh, there's a dog in there. You keep a dog in the closet. Like that whole scene's great. Yeah. I don't, I don't want him to bite anyone. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and I love that he's like, oh, I love dogs. But then later his coffee mug says, I love cats. I thought that was kind yep. of funny. <laughs> um, you know what we don't get enough in this movie, though, is uh, Hamilton, the other fry cook. Every yeah, scene he's, he's in, great. he fucking steals it. 
who is the actor that plays Hamilton? Does anybody know off the top of their head? Uh, at uh, first, I, I thought that was most deaf. <laughs> he, uh, kinda. Andre Royo. What else has he been in? Let's see. Spectacular. I, know, I didn't now. notice how um, dirty that damn kitchen was. Though. Oh god, that diner oh. is disgusting. It's <laughs> so gross. I love too that like. You know, most movies, like, they play up the suspension, suspension of disbelief whenever characters are lying. But, like, when him uh, and Frank are watching the news piece about uh, the Crimson Bolt and Frank pretends like he doesn't know anything about him. And he goes, I hear he only beats up, you know, the bad people. Whatever he says. And Hamilton <laughs> yeah. goes, you told me you knew nothing about him. And he doesn't let him go. He doesn't let him yeah, off the hook. He's like, what? no, no, they they just mentioned it. He's like, no. No, I, I watched that whole piece. whole thing. <laughs> they did not say that. Yeah, that's great. I wish he was in more of this movie. But I wish he played a, a bigger role. But Yeah, that would be great. Like, I kind of, as much, like, because it kind of seemed like they were building that diner up to, like, play a bigger role in the movie. Like, I kind of expected, like, I don't know, like a shootout or something to happen at that diner mm-hmm. and it never came to be. Yeah, no, there's a lot of things that like they, they set in motion that they don't really do a lot with. Like, for example, the biggest thing I think of is the detective getting shot. Like, does Fra- Frank never goes back to his house after that, right? Nope. Yeah, I, I don't know. I I thought whenever like him and Libby are like creating like the, the weapons and everything that they're going to take, like the pipe bombs and stuff, I thought that was at Frank's house. And I'm just like, do I, is he not gonna find the police? The no, police detective's body. Call it Libby's apartment. Oh, okay, yeah. It's. Um, I feel like dude, Frank I, should have come across that at some point to really. I love when they go to the gun shop. Oh, the gun montage like, is great. At, at first, everyone in there's like looking at him, like, "What the fuck?" But then once they start like buying stuff, like he's like fist bumping the redneck guy and shit like that. Yeah, it's so fucking great. Oh, I love Libby almost machetes that guy for bumping into her. <laughs> that is good. That is good. Um, I like that they bought machetes. That's, you know, yeah. they're they're covering all their grounds. Um, okay. Most disgusting sequence in this movie for me, the vision he has of Sarah in the vomit of the toilet. Yeah. That is fucking <laughs> gross, dude. Yeah, it's pretty, oh, pretty gnarly. So gross. But then that leads into, like, God. Like, I it kind of... Sounds fucked up to say because he was technically just raped, but Frank is straight up kind of rocking some post nut clarity with his whole <laughs> "no one is ever ready" speech. Yeah, <laughs> like I mean, you know, let's be honest, call call it as we see it. But that little speech he gives is fucking great. No, it's a good it. speech for sure. Um, and then that leads to the assault on Jock's mansion, which that whole sequence is just fucking. It's rock and roll from the get go. It I love is. It. But there are there's a lot of problematic stuff in that climactic scene that there's we, a lot of problematic stuff in this entire movie. Yes, Justin. most of it comes up in that scene. One one bit of lie that I did get a genuine laugh out of, even though I was like, I know I'm not supposed to be laughing at this. Like when he's trying to to uh, sneakily get the attention of the guards, like when he's like, "Hey, I'm a little bird," <laughs> the guy yeah. turns around. <laughs> but the one that gets me the most is when he's holding the pipe bomb. And that one guard's like, what's in your hand, you fucking retard? <laughs> I was like, god damn, this is such a 2010 movie. But then that dude explodes into yeah. a fucking billion pieces. It's great. Um, and then, oh, holy yeah, so shit. said in this movie. Yeah. I completely forgot Kevin Bacon drops a hard-ass N-bomb right in the climax of this movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Did yeah. not, I didn't see it coming, yeah. did not sit well with me, man, but. It, mm. oh. <laughs> yeah, that, oh, that was rough. It's, but it's, Kevin Bacon seems so nice up until that point. He does, he's I such know, right? a nice He seems like he's criminal. just misunderstood. Like, okay, I, I think I know the answer to this question, but like, you're at, you're, you're uh, it's early morning, you're making breakfast in your, uh, your bathrobe, you're a knock at the door, and it's Kevin Bacon asking for some of your eggs you definitely give him some of your eggs right 100 percent. yeah it's bacon and eggs yeah Yeah. (laughs) with that (laughs) now see if it's john claude van damme i might be a little uh, i'm gonna hesitate i'm gonna hesitate he might kick me right in the balls with those splits of his exactly um but i do love that he keeps like the whole are these brown eggs are these what makes these eggs so good no it's just (laughs) but it's 
It is an interesting well, take on. I like, love a how they kind of kind of they kind of run that joke through the whole movie. He's like, "Oh, they got the eggs, the brown eggs." Yeah, yeah, they weren't brown. <laughs> yeah. No, um, I I do love that. Like, that he's not your typical like. I'm just a bad guy. Like the, the whole, you know. Oh, I complimented your eggs, man. Come on, don't touch my car like that. Like he, you can see how he gradually gets more and more annoyed throughout the movie. It's pretty great. Uh, the, um, I mean, it's just the, the scene in the trailer. With, don't touch my car, and he touches it. Well, that's not the kind of touching I was talking. Yeah, about. that's yeah. I'm, I'm leaving. That's <laughs> the kind of touching I meant. This is pretty great. Um, I think my favorite scene or my favorite thing in this movie is how. Frank just straight up pulls a John McClane with the sign on the dead body. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I love it. I love it so much. Like that, that has to be like, that was an intentional diehard reference. Like oh, there's yeah. no fucking way it wasn't. No, all the, the henchmen are great. Sean Gunn, Michael Rooker, and that, uh, the other guy that I'm not too familiar with. It's also oh, weird seeing I, Michael Rooker I, with I, hair. I know, right? <laughs> I love Sean Gunn's character in this movie. <laughs> yeah. Sean Gunn's character um, is pretty great. His dude, his death is fucking brutal when Libby mm-hmm. just runs him down with the car, pins oh, him between yeah. the wall. Oh. Yeah. Oh, well, also I, really upsetting how excited she is about that. Oh man, yeah. Um I you know, we speaking of Sean Gunn, of course is a staple of James Gunn's movies. He pops up in every one of them. Uh I will say I was looking at just like the cast list of this movie, James Gunn, if I will say one thing about him is that he really does write by his actors, even like extras even if they aren't featured extras because most of this cast shows up in his other movies pretty much every single person has a, a role even if it's just a bit part in like okay. guardians did guardians you, 2 did you catch the lloyd kaufman cameo in this no who's he playing he, he he cameos in a lot of james gunn's movies like he's in guardians one what's he in this um, movie he is it's during the scene where um frank's getting his ass beat by Sean Gunn and the other dude and uh, Libby runs him down with the car. Mm-hmm. He's just one of the guys like watching it happen. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was, yeah. It <laughs> just like cuts. It just cuts to the people reacting and he's one of them. I mean, we did uh uncut gems last week. Now we're doing this movie. Just a lot of cameos in these two lot movies. Cameos, Lots man. of cameos. Um, Man, there's there's not too much. I don't think left to get into this or anything uh, specifically. Kobe, is there anything we haven't mentioned yet that you want to talk about? Oh man, I, like just all the the crazy shit, like the um, every death that happened mm. just seemed <laughs> way over the top. Like Michael Rooker <laughs> has gotten his head bashed in way too many times. I I feel like yeah, <laughs> yeah. I thought ah, uh, one it's, one too it's many. All, everything's so over the top though. Um, dude, I gotta say my favorite line, and it's in the trailer, but the she loves me because I am fucking interesting <laughs> it's pretty great like, dude, that, him that slow stabbing so him to death is is pretty rough especially with Liv dude, tyler just screaming oh in the God. corner that's that's my favorite shot of the movie like how the camera like pulls back as yeah. he's stabbing jock <laughs> and sarah's just screaming i was like that shot's fucking great it's like, fucking brutal holy shit um Man, yeah. The, 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 every time Frank hits somebody with a wrench, I fucking feel it, man. The sound design of just the impact. Oh, it's it, you, every oh, dude, one of like, them. There's such a like a bassy oomph to yeah. every hit of oh, that wrench. Oh. Um, I do love, you know, speaking of cameos, Linda Cardellini in the pet shop. I I love the payoff of the rabbit. Um you know, I mean, I have a soft spot for rabbits. I have three of them, but like just Linda Carnalini presenting a, a small rabbit to <laughs> to Frank was so great. And then him, of course, at the end, just I don't even think it's the same rabbit, but him just petting that rabbit while he's crying is a great shot too. Oh, dude, I love like say what you will about this movie, but that last shot of Rain Wilson hits so hard for me. Yeah, it's, like of him just like like with the voiceover explaining how. Well, I guess we're gonna. I guess I'm gonna. Cover yeah, go the ahead and just give us a recap of the ending. So after he he kills Jock, he defeats all his guys, and he rescues Sarah, and then kind of in voiceover we get pretty much like you know Sarah stayed with him. Almost out of obligation for rescuing her. Mm-hmm. But then after a few months, she leaves. She goes to rehab, you know, and now she's he- actively helping others. And like, she got married. She has four kids. They call him Uncle Frank. Adorable, but also sad. Yeah. Um, and it's just like the last shot is Rain Wilson holding this bunny, like gently petting it and like kind of looking at his wall covered in drawings that he did of like him with sarah's kids and then like 
Um, the last one is he's looking at a drawing he did of Libby. And then we get that single, that crybaby tear rolling down his cheek. And that's it, man. Yeah. He pretty much is like, you know, it's a sad uh, ending. It is a sad ending. It's like Sarah was able to, you know, have four kids with this guy that she loves. She was able to recover from her, her uh, addiction and like live a fulfilling life, but still keep, keep Frank in the loop. Like, still like she's sending him the kids drawings and stuff so like he's still like a part of their lives and frank's just alone at the end he doesn't have he doesn't even have libby anymore he just has this rabbit and it's it is a interesting way to end this movie because it feels real in terms of like how this things would go like i don't know if i buy sarah just being like oh thank you for rescuing me i'm yours forever like i I do love that we do get to see like little glimpses of what their life is like, like right after, like with him, like laying his head in uh, her lap and her like running her hands through his hair. Like it is yeah. a sweet moment. And then when she rolls over in bed and there's some other guy there, it's like, it really hits you. Something I wasn't yep. expecting from this movie. Like I didn't remember exactly how this ending went. So this was like almost like watching it with fresh eyes. It was, it was interesting. Um, is there anything else we want to talk about before we get into like uh, the post wrap up stuff? Uh, I think we missed. We hit we hit everything I had written down. What about you, Cubby? Is there anything we forgot to talk about that you wanted to cover? Um, I mean, how long how long do you think the the timeline was for something like this in this, oh, this movie? That's a good question. Because it seemed like everything was fine. Then all of a sudden, walks in. They're having a drug circle, and then she's doing heroin like a week later. Yeah, I don't know. I would say um, maybe from. The time he becomes the Crimson Bolt until he rescues her, it's what, like maybe three days? Four days? No, I, no. You think so? More than that, yeah. Well, he goes out. Because I don't think he's like attack. like I don't think all that crime shit happened in one day. Like that whole crime montage wasn't one day. Well, I remember him like sitting behind the dumpster like his first night. He's like waiting for crime and nothing happens. Second night, nothing really happens either. And then like the third day is like when he starts like really I, that's why it's i don't know well because he has that he has that first inner like okay so the first night nothing happens second night nothing happens third night he has when he first tries to take out that drug dealer and you're has right to run away you're right and he has to go buy the fucking wrench so what maybe like um, a week or two maybe i'd more? say uh, i'm gonna say a couple weeks okay I, I mean i'd believe that too for sure um I think after he rescues Sarah, how long do you think they stay around for before she finally splits? Maybe like he he mentions a f- that it's a couple oh, months, not long. It? Yeah, that's what I figured. Like maybe three or four months. Yeah, I th- he mentions it's a couple months. I don't think he's specific, but yeah, just a few months probably. Um, the only other thing I wanted to briefly talk about it's nothing really too uh, too important, but it's just, it's interesting that we're you know, uh, Mally, you and I are both deep into The Last of Us Two, and you know, yes. uh, El- Ellie in that game of course famously had the controversy with ellen page's likeness being taken i just thought it was interesting that we've got ellen page in this movie and then we're both playing the game it's just like ellen page is in my life no matter where i go <laughs> and then you were talking about talking to me the other day about the umbrella academy so it's like i can't yep, i can't yep. escape her <laughs> yeah I, 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 I was just watching umbrella academy and playing last of us and then we had to watch this movie so yeah a lot lot of uh a lot of Ellen Page going on. A lot of Ellen Page and Ellen Page's yeah, likeness. You guys have a lot of Ellen Page, and I have Dwight Schrute. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> we yeah, can't escape yeah. it. Um, all right. The only bit of trivia I thought that was pretty funny is uh, Roger Ebert's review for this movie was simply titled, It's Not Funny to Be Bashed with a Wrench. That was the title of his review for this movie. I beg to differ, sir. It's pretty funny. It's pretty fucking funny. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Um. All right. Well, why don't we get into uh, Prop Cop? Which is, uh, if there's one prop from the movie that we would like to own for ourselves, what is it? Oh, so, I got mine, sir. What is yours, Mally? I kind of want Libby's Claws. Libby's Wolverine claws. <laughs> yeah, like those Wolverine are ki- those are kind of rad. Yeah, I wish they were like extendable. You know, like I got yeah. them up my sleeve and shit. Yeah. Maybe, what about you, Kobe? Is is there anything you want from this movie in particular? Man, I've been torn for. I, I either want to the two drawings that Frank did, 
Okay. I want those okay. like framed on my wall. Yeah. In the beginning of the movie, or okay. I want to try okay. those damn eggs. You want? You want just the eggs? <laughs> he just wants the eggs. Honestly, I, I just, I just want a plate of eggs, man. Well, they're a decade old now at this point. So. <laughs> hey, bro, eggs is eggs. Um. Yeah, I was kind of torn between a couple. I mean, the Crimson Bolts wrench I thought was pretty obvious, so I didn't want to take that. Yeah, um, I That's thought like, if, you, if you don't want the wrench without the entire ensemble anyway, you'll just yeah. look, look ridiculous. Uh, I thought the rabbit would be funny, but I'm like, that rabbit's probably long dead by now because this movie's so old at this point. Dude, you have enough fucking rabbits. That's true. I have. I got too many. But the, this is an interesting other bit of uh, topic. The prop cop I settled on was the box of good and plenty that Michael Rooker's character is eating throughout this entire movie. Did you guys notice this? He's got the same box of candy. I don't know if there's supposed to be a joke there with I... like have never noticed that before yeah, he's, he's eating a box of good and plenty which is like the most basic candy i think i could imagine throughout this entire movie <laughs> all right um, interest interesting prop cops yeah, this yeah, week. Basically. <laughs> yeah um all right well why don't we get into the whole crux of the show the part we're least uh least good at <laughs> uh yeah. the silver linings so uh what do we have uh, for silver lining for super I mean, Sarah beat her addiction. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like that's the obvious one. I feel like there's a more fun one somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's implied that she had a problem even before they had met, right? Yeah. No, it's... it's, She said she's a recovering alcoholic. That's why she's working at the diner as like a part-time job. Right. She just relapsed. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Relapsed fucking hard. Yeah. Um, mine's pretty similar. I said that, uh, you know, honestly, I'm happier for Sarah than anything at the end of this movie. I mean, she's really come a long way. Uh, it's unfortunate she couldn't find what she needed in Frank, even after all that. But similarly, Frank's a fucking psychopath. So maybe it's good that she's... A little bit. Uh, (laughs) distanced herself from him at the end of this movie. Um, yeah, you know, I I think a mother to four children, she's clearly showing... Uh, a growth in her values and that she still keeps Frank around and involved in their life. Like she doesn't just straight up abandon him. And I do like, you know, Frank is upset at the end of this movie because he's alone, but you know, they show that shot of his walls just littered with all these drawings that he's done that uh, Sarah's kids have done for him. Like he's got at least a, a family adjacent connection. You know what I mean? He still has people that care for him. Oh, I think I have another one. Hmm. Now, I don't know if pet shop workers work on commission. I was just about to say this. <laughs> but if so, Linda Cardellini, hey. She made that sale. for her. So, yeah. yeah, good for her. Yeah. Good for her. Kobe, I, we probably st- stole your thunder if you had a silver lighting, because I can't think of anything else there would be. But uh, do you have a silver lining for this movie? No, Maybe. I mean, yeah. About the same thing, like, at least she's, like, you know, happy and has a family and everything, and mm-hmm. Frank seems happy to, um, you know, that she's happy and better off. Just sad that, you know, he's, obviously it's been years since she's left him, yeah. the fact that she's had, like, four kids. Yeah. But, uh, I guess, you know, the fact that he had to go through all this shit just to uh, find some sort of happiness for her, at least. Yeah. I will say, too, kind of a, a darker silver lining, but one that's at least worth mentioning is, uh, you know, not for nothing, but Libby's death wasn't entirely in vain in that Frank took out two crime syndicates. <laughs> he took out Kevin Bacon's group and that other group. Yeah. Uh, so that's, you know, yeah. more heroin off the street and more Man, violent. God, I love that whole sequence after Libby dies where he just fucking like his like march up to the mansion where he's he goes super saiyan destroying yeah destroying <laughs> everybody um who, all right wait hold up who had a bet who had a better and i'm gonna call it a death march frank in this movie as he's just offing everyone leading up to the mansion or thanos at the end of infinity war oh god <laughs> i'm gonna give it to frank bro yeah frank tossing pipe bombs left and right and shotgunning he people in the face hard yeah <laughs> Yeah, with no um, powers, he did all right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, why don't we talk about uh, what we like to call a pick-me-up 
movie alternative. So these are movies that we recommend that you double feature with Super. Uh, you watch Super first, and then you watch our recommendation afterwards. So it's somewhat to pick your spirits back up, because Super does end on a pretty dour note. So, Mally, do you have a suggestion for what a movie people should watch after they watch Super? I do, but first, I just had a thought. Imagine if at the end of Avengers Endgame, when all the portals opened up, fucking Frank just walked out. Oh, man, the Crimson Bolt just shows up out of the Uh, the, (laughs) the portals. Dude, Thanos' army would go running. (laughs) I just want... fucking running. I would love someone to edit in. Maybe this is something I need to do. But, like, you know, when they're all coming out, and before Avengers Assemble is said, he comes out and he just screams, shut up, crying. No, no, better. <laughs> oh, my God. You, you, have, you have Captain America go, Avengers! And then you just have Frank yell, shut up, crime! And, and then, then they, they attack, crime. yeah. I might That'd have to, to get on my editing to do this. Um, <laughs> so that that's my pick-me-up alternative. Um, no, I'm going to recommend, just because I want to see Kevin Bacon just living it up as an over-the-top villain. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go X-Men First Class, bro. Okay. Gets that uh, coin right I, to his fucking skull. I'm not going to lie. I fucking love that movie. Yeah, it's First Class pro- is great. It's got problems, but it's pretty fucking solid. Like, the Argentina yeah. scene with Fassbender mm-hmm. is one of the best X-Men scenes ever. Yeah, it's great. And Kevin Bacon, heavily underutilized in that movie, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, I hate that we never really get to see him fucking just... Well, he's unleash. like a German, right? Uh, kind of, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going with uh, a movie that I love so much, and I find it a shame that not that many people know about it. Uh, but don't say hard candy. Don't say hard no. candy. Don't say hard candy. <laughs> um, an- another movie that's got a very similar tone and type of humor uh, that I just think is great all around. It's one of my favorite ah, comedies. I'm going with, uh, oh. <laughs> I'm going with Mystery Team. Starring Donald Ooh. Glover, DC Pearson, Aubrey Plaza. Oh, solid pool. It's such a good one. fucking movie. That's um, like that's one of those movies. It kind of reminds me um, of Short Term 12 in that it's full of people that are going to be mm-hmm. extremely famous mm-hmm. in a couple years. Yeah. Yeah, that, I think that was the first thing I ever saw Aubrey Plaza in and fell in love immediately. Like, that, she, she's so good in that movie. And did, you ever watch, did you ever watch Legion? No, I still haven't seen Legion. Uh, you're if you like Aubrey Plaza, you're gonna want to watch Legion. I might have to check it out then. What it's about you? Fucking uh, great. What about you, Kobe? Is there a movie you can think of that would be a good pairing with this movie? Yeah, man. For uh, some reason, the one movie I could think of the whole time was a uh, Scott Pilgrim versus the World. Yeah. Oh, of yeah. course. That's a good pick. It's a great movie. Something is... not as crazy. Also a 10-year anniversary yeah, this year. Yeah, 10-year anniversary of that movie this year. Um, well, the last little bit here. Uh, do you recommend this movie? I think it's a resounding yes, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, for sure. Like I said, when he got when James Gunn got announced for Guardians and people didn't know who he was, I was like, oh, check out this movie, Super. Mm-hmm. And I, I didn't follow up with a lot of those people, but I feel like a lot of them were like, what the fuck? <laughs> um. You know, we didn't really get to talk too much about like the Holy Avenger stuff with Nathan Fillion and uh, James Gunn's character. That also, oh, that stuff's all great. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do think I would recommend this movie for a specific audience. Um, I think if you enjoy that sort of low budget, sort of childish protagonist in a much more mature world type of comedy, you'll enjoy this. Like if you would, if you did see Mystery Team and you like that, you'll probably like this too. Um, I feel like this is like a, a very specific niche genre. Like I can't think of any other examples, but I'm sure there's a ton more of like these low budget comedies that feature these protagonists that don't really fit in with the rest of the world. You know what I mean? I can't think of not, any other. Not, not really, but <laughs> okay. Maybe it's just me. Uh, well, thank you so much everyone for listening. Please. If you haven't already, uh, subscribe, rate and feedback wherever you're at. Uh, we're on pretty much all major podcasting platforms. If you're not a fan of uh, iTunes or wherever you're finding us right now, uh, you, there's plenty of other places to pick from. Uh, we have new episodes every Monday. Uh, you can follow us on social media if you'd like, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, uh, and even Reddit. If you just search the Silver Linings playlist, I'm sure you'll find us. Kobe, thank you so much for being on this episode. This was a long time coming. Uh, I know we've been trying to get you on for a while, so I'm glad we could get you in. Oh, yeah, man. Just just under the wire of 100 episodes. Um, which, speaking of which, clue oh, for next so week. 
It's the big one hundo, so Mally, I happen to have a clue for what we're talking about. Oh, I'm sure you do, sir. I mean, Jesus Christ, it's our it's our one hundredth episode. I mean you can't uh, no, it's 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 quite a revelation, really. I mean you, you can't deny it. Like it's clearly we've made it this far. Holy shit. God help us with this with this one hundredth episode. Yeah. It's, it's it's gonna be yeah revolutionary. It's 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 gonna be rolling in on the clouds, like just it's just gonna be uh, marching up. You know what I mean? Like it's it's almost like it's like a resurrection of the show. I think you know what it I mean. It really is. It really is. We're gonna be coming into a new era, like almost like a new testament. It's it's a lot. It's gonna be big. So with that in mind, tune in next week to find out what that pivotal one hundredth episode is. And until then. As always, shut Shut up, up, slime! Excelsior! 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 Look it up!